that in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about uncertainty and then move on to calculate, calculate different percentage uncertainties. Before I do that, just a couple of quick definitions that you just need to know. So accuracy is a measure of how close a measurement or a calculated value is to the true value. So a resistor, for instance, has a fixed resistance, and we can do an experiment to measure what that is. And so how accurate our measurement is, is how close it is to that true value of resistance. And uncertainty is the difference between that reading and the true value. So it gives you an indication of how accurate your measurements are. So say, for instance, we had a reading of potential difference of 2.1 volts and we had uncertainty of plus or minus 0.01 volts which is a typical precision of a voltmeter so what that is saying is that potential difference is between these two values. So that's how uncertain you are of the reading you've got. It's so you know your answer is a it's a it's somewhere between those two values and you come up with 2.1, but that gives you an idea of how close it is. So scientists are really interested in this because when they collect results, they really want to know, well actually how accurate are my results? Could I be getting closer to the correct answer by using more precise equipment, for example, or taking different readings. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the two different percentage uncertainties you need to be able to calculate. So what are those two, first of all? First of all, there's the percentage uncertainty in a reading. So in a given measurement, what's the percentage uncertainty? And what's the percentage uncertainty in the mean values you've calculated at the end? Because we take repeats and calculate an average to try and improve the accuracy, but actually, well, have we reduced the uncertainty? And the reason we use percentages is, is to allow us to compare different readings and different sets of data. So it's always difficult to compare a 100 ohm reading with a 1 ohm reading because you're using different equipment or different settings, that sort of thing. Percentage uncertainty allows you to compare the uncertainty between those two results. So let's have a move on and have a look. So first of all, uncertainty in a reading. So in this exam, you have to be very careful to read the question correctly to know if it's asking for the uncertainty in a reading or the uncertainty in the average or uncertainty in the mean value. Because if you calculate the wrong one, obviously you'll get no marks and you'll look a bit silly. So uncertainty in a reading, you need two things. One, you need the precision of the measuring instrument that you are using. Say, for instance, using a voltmeter, and it might be 0.01 volts, or the milliameter might be 0.1 milliamps, or a ruler, maybe you reckon it's accurate to the nearest millimeter, that sort of thing. So that's the precision of your instrument. And remember, your precision is the smallest non zero reading. So if you have a, a ruler, this off very often the first non-zero reading is a millimeter or a centimeter. So that would be the precision of those two different rulers. And that like I said before, the voltmeter and ammeter have a precision as well. Once you have that, and you also need a measurement or a reading. So your voltmeters come out at 2.1, that would be that record of the measurement. So the way to calculate the reading percentage uncertainty is to take the precision, which is the uncertainty in this case. So that's the precision, it goes on your top line, and the measurement goes on your bottom line, and then multiply by 100%, and that will give you the, the percentage uncertainty in a given reading. Okay, and I'll look at an example of this and the other type of uncertainty at the end of this video, but I'm going to move on to look at uncertainty in an so percentage uncertainty in a calculated mean it's a little bit different to calculating it for a single measurement but not too much different first thing you need is 
the uncertainty in your repeat readings. And the way you calculate that is using this equation here. So your uncertainty in repeat readings is the range, so you're the biggest value minus the smallest value, divided by 2. The second thing is how to convert that uncertainty into percentage uncertainty, and just like before, it's the uncertainty divided by the value. And this bit in this case, the value is the mean value. And again, you multiply it by 100. So let's have a look at an example of this. If you have readings of 1.23, 1.24, 1.25, that obviously has a mean value of 1.24, uh, you shouldn't even need a calculator to know that. So the range of this, your biggest minus your smallest, is 1.25 minus 1.23, and that gives you 0.02. So the uncertainty is that range divided by 2, and that gives you 0.01 volts, if those were, I think, readings of voltage in this case. And with uncertainties, you really need to make sure you include the unit. It's not a correct answer if you don't include units in uncertainty. Percentage uncertainty doesn't have a unit as a percentage, but uncertainty does, and you need to be careful with that. So let's convert that into a percentage uncertainty. So we take our 0 0.01, divide it by the mean value, 1.24, times it by 100, and you end up with an uncertainty of 0.81% pretty low as it goes. So one of the questions that very typically comes up is actually how do we go about reducing the percentage uncertainty either in a reading or in the mean value? So for in a reading, one of the things you can do is you can increase the precision of your measuring instrument. So you decrease the uncertainty in the measurement, I think that makes sense. Or you can increase the value of the reading taken because if you see on the bottom line here, you have the reading. So if you make that a bigger number, your percentage uncertainty has to come down. So that's another way you can do it by actually increasing the value. So instead of uh, taking a reading of 2 volts, you take a reading of 200 volts, for instance. I think, okay? So that's that one. Reducing percentage uncertainty in the calculated mean... Um, one of the things you could do is actually take more repeat readings, so when you average them in theory, you've got a more accurate result, so you should be closer to the true value or have smaller uncertainty. You, again, can increase the precision of your measuring instrument, and you can increase the value of meetings taken because this would make your mean value bigger, so just like before, using 200 instead of 2, for instance, but obviously you have to bear in mind what you can safely use with the, the equipment that you have available. So let's have a look at an example here. So this is the data, again, taken from the video I made on the ISA practical skills. So let's have a look at the uncertainty in a reading. So let's just pick this one here at the top. So we know the precision of is 0 0.1 milliamps. So we're gonna have milliamps on top and bottom line. So we don't have to worry about converting to amps because they're out by the same factor. Okay, so our percentage uncertainty, ugh, let's, do, let's get this right to start with, it's going to be the precision, so 0 0.1, divide by the actual reading, 1.7 times 100, and that's going to give you a percentage uncertainty of... 5.8 oh, hey, so when you round it that will become 5.9% which is quite a high percentage uncertainty so one of the things I talked about before was increasing the value so let's take this one here the 100.8 so this 0.1 is going to stay the same, but instead we're going to replace that with 0.8. So if we recalculate that value, it actually comes out as this time of 0.099%.
So you can increase, you see, you've drastically decreased the percentage uncertainty just by taking a larger reading. And very often in these questions, they won't tell you exactly which reading. They'll say, take, calculate the uncertainty in the reading that has the smallest one, so you know to pick the largest value. So you have to be careful with that one. So let's move on to an example about in the, uh, the percentage uncertainty in the... Let's have a look here. And just like before, I'm going to take a look at these top lines. So first of all, the range is going to be 1.9 minus 1.7 gives you 0.2 milliamps, which means your uncertainty is going to be 0.2 divided by 2 is going to be 0.1 milliamps, again remembering to include the unit. So then your percentage uncertainty is going to be that uncertainty, so 0.1, divided by the mean value, so 1.80 times by 100, and that gives you not to roll 5.6%. Which if you compare it to the value from the previous question, where we, just in the 1.7 reading we had a percentage uncertainty of 5.9, you can see we've actually, by taking average, managed to reduce the overall uncertainty.